Um, I don't have an LP training, and I can understand if when an adult comes to somebody seeking maybe help, and um, but those of us who are going to be working with uh, children who don't have that kind of training, how safe is it to do that with, say, uh, an older child, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, who is not visualizing to take them back like that? Uh, how? Uh, safe is it for us to go there? Um, if you, want to, you, know, you mean you in, cover maybe things that are very deep. Yeah. You may want to um, kind of do what we were talking about uh, on that exercise that we did with the um, the touch exercise. You know, it's um, what I would want you to do. To do is just be aware that there might be abuse there, something like this, and and um, if you, what we do in NLP is that we, we train ourselves to have acuity so that we can recognize that at the early, early warning, if you will, that somebody's about to go into a bad state and then we kick them out. Not kick them out, we get them out of that state. Um, we, do a, we do what we call a break state on them so that we break that. Um, so I think being aware that there might be something like that and just being sensitive to it and um, Somebody was talking about this before in NLP. We would, we would, before we put them in there, we would ha <clears throat> have some sort of anchor, what we call an anchor or state that they can get to like that. Like, for example, I might say, this is reality here. Where you're going is inside your head. It's not reality. It's a memory. So when you open your eyes and you look around, this is safe. You're safe here. And then if you send them back in there and that they start having a, a, a reaction or something like this, you know, you can physically say, okay, come over here, look around the room, this is reality, and so you're, that's one way to, to do a break state. Would we have to stop working with that child until they were able to get the kind of help that they needed? Uh, if, I, this is probably an extraordinary case, but I would kind of like to know just in case it ends up. Um, if they can't visualize, um, See, Julie can actually do some of the things we're asking her to do. I mean, this, the, um, she can spell backwards and she can do some of the things. It's about being aware that she can do it is where the, the deal is. And the thing that really intrigues me is that it probably is, is the anxiety of being up here that just kind of blows away her pictures, so to speak. So you might deal with whatever is causing the anxiety. Um, or if, um, if you don't deal with stuff like that, you know, send her, if you have an NLP person in your community, we'll send her to the NLP person and let them do some trauma work with her or whatever, um, or a psychologist or somebody that does that. Yes? If I can just add to that, I think with the, um, the belief that I can't visualize, I mean, I, I'm like that and I can relate totally what Julie is going through. What came to my mind as she was going through it, thank you, was that, um, I don't think I can do it because I'm not doing it as perfectly as I think I should be doing it. My high expectations of myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's that's an example of how limiting beliefs can limit us. And so you go after that's the issue that you go after. You know, what, where did you get the idea that you had to do things perfectly? You know, who gave it to you? And then you you find out what that issue is, and then you go in and and change that. So those of you that are going to be here in the second week, see, we we get. We're going to learn lots of techniques about how to deal with strong limiting beliefs and how to deal with stuff like that. Um, because that, when, you, when you find, you know, like a trauma down there or something like this, it can do exactly what it's doing to Julie. You know, it just blows everything away. You can't, you can't focus. You can't do some of the things that other people can do because of the emotional charge that goes with it. Yesterday when we worked with that lady, she said that she can make pictures, but she cannot visualize. And we said, okay, let's call it pictures. Right. And, and I even, we even didn't uh, inquire, what do you mean you can make pictures, you cannot make, visualize? I mean, we didn't go there because it, ser it served us yesterday. Mm -hmm. I said, right. okay, let's call it pictures. And is it okay to call it pictures? or visualizing, it's exactly the same as terminology. And she was very particular about terminology. We had few times that we had to overcome that.
exact uh, fit about uh, terminology. So <laughs> sometimes it makes it. But I wanted to ask, as an example, like the apple, can we ask somebody, uh, do you dream? I mean, sure. dreaming That's an will be another yeah. good place to go there? Mm -hmm. True. Anytime you can find a counterexample to what they think they can't do, then it, it gives you a foot of being able to, to change it. I'm actually quite aware that I can do it in some form. What I would like to do is to make it more, um, more clear and more vivid and more um, attainable. Mm -hmm. And I would like to get rid of the doubt. There's a <clears throat> woman by the name of Marilyn Sargent. She's an NLP trainer. Some of you probably know. Mm -hmm. And she goes around the country teaching uh, learning strategies. And she couldn't visualize. So she'd teach the spelling strategy and all the other stuff. Um, and yet, when you'd ask her, she said, I can't make pictures. She married, she married Al Sargent. Um, Al Sargent, and you're, you're, we're, we're going to talk more about this later on. Al Sargent is the person that started to develop the inner eye material. What the inner eye says, inner eye material says, is that not only do you have a left eye and a, and a right eye out here, but when you try to image something on the inside of your mind, you also have a left eye and a right eye. And it's what causes a lot of our self-esteem. See, this is one of the things that I would check with Julie, too. Get her to the point that she could recognize that she, maybe when she's trying to visualize, that she's using the wrong internal eye. Marilyn was laying there in bed one morning, and she was kind of playing around with this stuff, and so she said, got the idea, maybe I'm using the wrong internal eye. And so she switched internal eyes with a spelling word, and there it was. Clear as it could be. Why is there a wrong and right one for the inner arms? I mean, I don't get that. For left and right. Remember, yeah, he didn't use the words wrong yeah. and right. He used left and right. right. Yeah. As in the side of the body, as opposed to judgment call. For example, let me... Let me what is this? Like how we construct and how we remember. It could be that or, or not. Um, let, let me, this is, we're, we're supposed to do this later in the week, but let me, let me give you just a, how many of you know what your, on the outside, your, your external dominant eye is? Are you, is, your, is your left eye dominant or is your right eye dominant? So one of the ways to determine is to pick a spot on the wall. Okay, I got a spot right over there. Take a, your, put your fingers together like this, to make a circle, put it right up to your nose, and take it out to that spot with both eyes open, keeping the spot in the center. Now close left eye. When I close, when I close the right eye, the spot stays in the circle. When I close the left eye, it gets out of the circle. The one that the eye that is open when it stays in the circle is your dominant eye. Okay. Al originally said that we have a, a dominant internal eye and that you literally will have internal images that are different so our self-esteem and by the way the dominance shifts back and forth there's a rhythm that you that you go through in your and again we're going to do this later in the week but with your left internal eye if you can get a sense of, of which internal eye you're looking at get an image of what you look like picture of yourself and then shift the internal eye and see if the image is the same most people will have a different image of themselves for the left internal eye and the right internal eye sometimes one of them is negative and the other one is positive sometimes they feel good about themselves sometimes they don't depending upon which internal eye they're using at the moment it's a real fascinating field of study Okay. And we're going to play with it later in the week in more depth. So that's one, one of the things that I might use on Julie, too, and just see 
which internal eye is she using to do this or not? Okay, yes. And also for me, when I really, really concentrate and if the further away I put the picture, the easier it is for me to see. When I bring the picture towards me, I lose it. But if I push it back as far as I can, and maybe that has something to do with uh, farsightedness and nearsightedness too, I don't know. But yeah. So my, my whole point with all of this is that I have a firm belief that everybody can visualize. Mm -hmm. And if we find somebody that thinks at the moment that they can't visualize, there's just all sorts of tools that we have at our disposal for being able to help them do that. And I won't go any further with the learning strategies until I get that task done because they're going to be beating, a, beating themselves up because they can't do what I'm asking them to do. Okay. And the internal, internal eye is one of the things that I use, finding if there was some sort of trauma that caused them to change. You know, how did they uh, take what somebody said to them and, and do, turn it the wrong way? The um, puberty thing is one that occurs sometimes. Uh, the thing like happened to the woman that somebody just said, don't let them see granny be put in the ground. A uh, lot of those types of just incidental, accidental things that their unconscious mind takes and interprets it as we're not supposed to visualize. And I search for those things and ferret them out and do the belief work on it if we, if we can. Okay, let's take a break. Move your body. One of the things that, um, <clears throat> that's important for you to be able to do is to um, have a way to deal with some of the symptoms of ADD, have a way to deal with the anger, have a way to deal with a lot of the emotional trauma that's there. <clears throat> and you're going to learn several ways to do that. But what I'm about to teach you is a way that I designed back then, and which I didn't know EFT, and I didn't know some of the other things that you're going to learn. And it's called the ADD dance. I originally called it the anger dance because I, I kept running across these kids that had a lot of anger and I needed to have a way to get them out of that anger just so that I could you know have access to them and it turned out that even though I called it the anger dance that it found out that that um, it could you could use it for lots of other things lots of other emotions so basically one of the ways to think about it is some one of you are going to get to come up here and be a demonstrate and then you're going to get to go off and work with each other on this. So one of the ways that you can search for what it would be useful for, just in case you don't have the symptoms of ADD, um, is any emotion that you can get stuck in. Like if you start to um, get angry or enraged or overwhelmed or distracted or you know any of that type of stuff, and you, you start to get into it and it's like stepping on a grease slide. It's just shoo, you know, once you start it, it's a, you're gone type of thing. And what this strategy will do is not allow you to get into it. So it's degenerative in the sense. Uh, once you even have the, the um, a glimmer, the first glimmer, if you will, of the idea that you're about to get into this emotion, this strategy will kick you out of it. So the first time I did it, it was a time that I was flying by the seat of my pants, so to speak. Um, I went to an alternative school in Texas, and I was working with the, the faculty and some of the students. And um, the faculty decided, and the counselors decided, it would be great fun to watch me individually work with the students. So they started going through their students that they were having a lot of problems with. <laughs> and they'd go, oh, let's give him this. No, let's give him this one. No, let's let him work on this one. You know. So they basically brought this, this lineup of students in, and I'd get an hour with each one of them. You know, what are you supposed to do in an hour? And they had this one young man that was a um, very nice-looking young man. He's a senior, very personable. But he had this anger problem, big-time anger problem. He would beat up people. He beat up his grandmother once, uh, beat up his girlfriend once. He, according to the, what they told me, the holes of his home, I mean, the walls of his home had holes in them where he'd kick a hole in it or he'd punch it out or something like this. He was... The principal thought that he was starting to get mad at her, and so she wanted me to deal with it <laughs> before it took over. So, and I, you know, didn't know what to do. I said, okay, I'll see what I can do. And so um, I did this particular thing. I devised this at this time. I didn't, I didn't have a name for it. 
I just said, I'm going to create a strategy to kick him out of that. And the good news is that it worked so well. Um, that was like April of the year. And in um, September, October of that year, the principal came up to Oklahoma City and took my certification program. And she reported to me, she said, you know, he graduated. He never had another anger incident during school. And um, I saw him this fall, and I was in a restaurant, and he came in and said normally he wasn't even paying attention to me, and he came over and sat down and reported that he hadn't had any anger incidents at all and that he had decided since he no longer had an anger issue that he was going to enroll in college. And he'd already given up on enrolling in college because he knew that he'd punch out a professor or something like this and get kicked out. So he had decided that he was going to enroll in college, and he was just, just doing it at that time. Then about two months later, she ran into him again, and he reported to her again that he still had not had an anger incident and that he was doing very well in college. So it, um, it seems to work pretty well with that. And again, I use it on like if a student is so distracted. I've used it on um, anger. I've used it on uh, um, impulsiveness as an ADD symptom. Um, Any time the, the feeling of whatever it is is just getting in their way. I've used it on So. Let me, um, let me demonstrate to you what the ADD dance is. Does anybody have an emotion that is like that grease slide type of thing? That whenever you um, start to get that emotion, that you lose it? Anybody have uh, anger that they'd like to be more in control of? You guys are just so perfect, huh? <laughs> Anybody have an ADD symptom that they'd like to? Okay, it can be like depression and despair, anything that's overwhelming, yes? Yeah, sure can. Well, I guess we don't do that one. Okay. <laughs> See, I think in your uh, manual, right in the first of your manual, um, there's a couple of pages in there. Um, that are taken out of the core transformation book. And the purpose of those pages is ways for you to get into yourself to find areas that you need to work on. Why don't tonight y'all look through that and see if you can't get in touch with, unless you really are perfect and don't need any more, read through that and see if you can find some things that would be useful for you to work on. Because, um, I mean, really, because... We, we're now through with the information dump, so to speak, and now it's going to be about doing things with each other, and particularly next week. And so if you don't have any issues, if you don't have any limiting beliefs, if you don't have any emotions that get in your way, you're going to be wasting your time, basically, as far as getting stuff for yourself. Okay? So I, explore, I invite you to, um, to look at that and see if it helps you pick up something. So June. What is it that you would like to work on? When I think of my ex-husband, I get very angry. Well, it's because we got chatter in the back. When you think of your ex-husband, I get very angry. It's very angry. <laughs> After 15 years, I still get very angry. Just to let everybody know that when we're passing this mic around, there is a button right here in the center that's called mute. And when you hold it down, it cuts it off. So if you're talking and doing this, it's not going through. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, actually, I'm going to want you to um, have your hands free. So. There you go. Will that work? Sure. Okay. Okay. All right. So when you think of your husband of 15 years ago, you get very, very angry. Very, very angry. Okay. Now, this is, what we're going to do is, would it be okay with you that when you think of him that you don't get angry? That would be nice. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right I, so this is not about me doing psychoanalysis or anything on her. This is about me installing a strategy. So it's going to work like this. I want you to have four pieces of paper. Let's come right over here for a minute and let me have that space. Four pieces of the paper that you're going to put on the floor, all about a foot to foot and a half apart, probably a foot apart. Okay? 
And these, for NLP people, these are going to be spatial anchors. Um, for the non-NLP people, these will be places where she knows to stand. <laughs> okay? Now, the way this is going to work is this. Um, the first piece of paper right here is going to be the context that get her into that anger. So it's going to be when she thinks about her husband. This spot, <coughs> ex-husband, thank you. This one right here will be the anger itself. Okay. Now the third one is going to be something that um, we can call it a break state, or we can um, call it like uh, peace, relaxation, at ease, whatever it is, the name that you give it, and you get to design it. Okay. And then the last one is going to be you get to design where you're going to end up. So I assume that you might want like you feel good about yourself, you're confident in your ability to exist in the world and to be you, be you or something like that. So the idea is that if we have, we have the third state right here is a very, very powerful resource state that's going to kick her out of the anger. And then this is going to be a powerful one, but it's going to be more subdued and long lasting, if you will, how she wants to, how she wants no, it's going to be how she wants to be. <laughs> now, this is not the score. Yeah. Now, it's very important that the, the anger or the, the context that gets her into anger that you do last. Because if you don't, and she starts to, to get into the anger, she may get lost. So we want to do that at the very last. All right? So June, um, how do you want to be, when you start to feel angry, if I can magically put a state there instead of anger that you'd go into, how, what, what type of states would you like to have? Would they be like a peace? Of mind, would you want relaxed? Would you want calm? Yeah, any of that. Neutral, neutral would be good. Okay. Um, do you know how to disassociate? Yeah. Okay. Disassociate means, by the way, when you see yourself like over there doing something. So when you see yourself in the mirror, you're disassociating. If you watch a, a pretend movie of yourself, you're disassociated. When you're in it, seeing your hands move in front of you, you're associated. So let's just do all of those. First one that I want you to do, we're going we're gonna to stack in here. Okay. Let's stack disassociation. Okay? Wait a minute, wait a minute, come here. Okay. We're going to stack disassociation, calm, and at peace. Okay. Is that enough? Sure. Okay. Okay. All right, so I want you to step in there and I just... I think I want neutral on there, too. Okay. Do you, okay, let's, let's do this. Step in there and do disassociate and then come back out. So all you do when you do disassociate is that, that she could say, what do I look like when I'm sitting in that chair? Or if I was in that chair looking at me, what would I look like? Either way, I'm making difference. Now, um, is there a time when you've been neutral? Yeah. Okay. Can you think of the, the specific time, a specific time that you were neutral? I'm not neutral very much. <laughs> <laughs> we only need one. Yeah, I understand that. We have to do calm and, okay. Is there ever a time that you are calm? Yeah. Can you think of a specific time when you were calm? Yeah. Okay. So what I want you to do is to step onto that piece of paper, and I want you to associate into that experience of being calm totally. I want you to see, hear, feel, taste, and smell what it's like for you to be calm. Let your whole body enter into calmness. And when you're fully associated into it, step out. Okay. Very good. Is that calm enough? Yep. Okay. Is there ever been a time that you've been totally at peace with yourself? At peace? Yep. 
peace of mind, so to speak? Can you think of a specific time that you were? Okay. Step into that same and see, hear, feel, taste, and smell yourself being totally, have a total peace of mind. Let it come over all of your body. Memorize what it feels like. Step out when you. Okay. Now, have you thought yet of a time that you were neutral? Or can you get into being neutral? Did that already. Did it already? Yeah. You didn't do what I said to do? No, neutral is the first one you wrote. I know, but you. No, I, I did think of one. Oh, you did? did. Yeah. And have you already stepped on it? Yeah. Didn't I? What did I do? Did you do it at the same time with Tom? No, I did it twice. What was the first time I stepped in? First time was disassociated. First, you, you couldn't think of a specific okay. time that you were at P, uh, with okay. them. Okay, so then you do a neutral one. Yeah. Okay, we'll do a neutral one. I've okay. got something. All right, so step in there and be as neutral, totally neutral as you can be. And when you, at the point of total, total neutrality, step out. Okay. Now, what I want is uh, two more things. When you're in this state of being disassociated, calm, peace of mind, and neutral, what would be a... Dissociated. And, and dissociated. What would be... Disassociated. Disassociated. Okay, when I step in there, I'm associated or I'm disassociated? You're disassociated. You, you associated in to being neutral and associated in to being, but you also have the ability to disassociate. Okay, so I was associating when I was in there, and now we're talking disassociation. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's confusing, isn't it? Um, if you were to come up with a, like a, a gesture or a body position that would symbolize that, the state right here, what would it be? Like uh, Di when she did the piece of cake, you know, piece of cake, piece of fruit type of thing. What, what gesture could you associate with this state that would symbolize it? First time I did this, I had the, a young man did the standing lotus position. Oh, oh, okay, I can do that. Okay. <laughs> Don't do it yet. Okay. Do so it. it's like with the hands out like that. Okay. One other thing. What um, uh, word or short phrase would you connect to this? Like, calm down. I'm okay. Something that would again symbolize what that state would be. Well, I usually do it relax, but I, I'll do peace. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to step on that spot and I want you to go, peace. And then as you feel yourself really getting that state, do it about three times. Peace. Peace. Okay. Very good. Okay. Now, in a minute, we're going to do this one. Let me talk about what I, the difference in this and that. This is more um, what, the thing that I like here, but you can add anything that you want, is for you to really feel good about yourself and for you to be confident in your ability to deal with life and be in the world. You can add anything else that you want, but if you're going to be able to overcome that thing that's been around for 15 years, you know, you should be more confident in your ability to deal with life because you're about to slay a dragon here, so to speak, right? Is that right? Okay. So do you want anything else besides um, being feeling good about yourself, 
and being confident of your ability to deal with life? Okay. So can you think of a specific time that you just felt really good about yourself? Okay. See, when I work with kids, mm -hmm. so step in there, and again, totally see and hear and feel and taste and smell yourself being feeling good about yourself. You are number one. Okay. Step out whenever you're doing it. And can you think of a time in your life, a specific time in your life, that you just felt absolute confidence? I mean, it's like you were about to uh, do something or you had some time in your life that you knew who you were and what you were about and you had all the confidence in the world that you could do it. So it could be a specific thing that you do that you're totally confident in or it could be a more global confidence that you might have. Got it? Step in there. <laughs> fall off what your anchor. Fall, <laughs> fall off your anchor, huh? <laughs> Good, step back. If it's okay with you, I want to add one more. Okay. Um, and that's the ability to either laugh at yourself or find humor in the world around you. Do you do that? Either one of them? All the time. All the time. Find a specific time that you've done that and really get into that feeling of humor. Step back for a minute if you're not there. <coughs> so you might want to think of a specific time. <coughs> Got one? Yep. Good. Step in there. Okay. okay. Step back. Now, again, can you think of a gesture? Or a physical way your body stands or something like this that you, you know, like, all right, or, yay, whatever it is, and, and a sound that would symbolize that or go with that. Come on. Okay. Step in there. Feel the feelings of men liking yourself and confident and Do it about three times. Okay. Someone doesn't seem to want to. My gesture doesn't seem to fit here. Okay, back off. Do the thinking out here, not on the. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it feels good out here, but it doesn't feel good. Okay, there. all right. I had this young man I was working with one time, and the time he picked was when he was in high school playing football, and he'd sacked the quarterback. So he'd actually act like he'd just tackled somebody and then and he'd go down to one knee and he'd go, all right. <laughs> I tore up my floor. What's it going to be? Tell me what it is. It'll be right on. Be what? Right on. Right on. What's the gesture? A smile? Okay. Go for it.
Okay, good. Looks, looks pretty good. Does that feel good? Feel pretty good? Okay. <clears throat> now, um, just come down here. <clears throat> One of the things that I would suggest that you make sure that you have in some way is what we call a break state. So, um, let's see. What color is the ceiling in here? Do you? Gray. Gray? You sure? What color are the walls? Yellowy. Yellowy? Yeah. Yellowy. Or if you can get her to laugh or something, then you can reach over and touch her on the shoulder and anything to kind of give yourself access to a real positive, strong state that she might have or a distracting state like, you know, looking up or something like that. Just in case she goes into the anger and she stays there or wants to stay there or stays there, tries to and stay attacks there. attacks the closest male. And attacks the closest Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did it. And they, so she makes, a, she makes a joke, and if somebody makes a joke, utilize it. But that's a good anchor for her to be in because humor is real powerful. Now, here's the way we're going to do this, June. Um, see, what you have down here is that you've got, you see, your, your verbal thing here, your deal was, but your verbal thing here was what? Peace. 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 Then this one was a smile and a right on. Yeah. Okay. What I want you to do here is think, and, th and this is really important that you do this with speed, Okay. I want you to step on this one and think of a context that you've seen or, or your, your ex-husband. And then I want you to step on here and just start to get an, a, a, the first glimmer that you're about to get angry. And then I want you back out here. I mean, I want you to jump back out here. Okay. It's, like, it's like a bell curve. It's like this. When anger is here, I want you to check out about right there. All right? Now, let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, let me ask you a question, and then I'll give you a couple of examples. How do you know at the earliest possible warning signal? Where in your body or in your mind do you know that you're about to get angry? Like, for example, this young man that I was telling you about, he, he had a picture in his mind of a, like a thermometer. And that thermometer, the red, would be going up in that thermometer, and there's a little line up there. And when that thermometer hit that little line, he'd just explode. Another woman I worked with is like the heat would come up in her body. Another one that I worked with, it's like she would start to see red. I mean, her whole internal field of vision would start to get redder and redder and redder. I feel pressure in my head. Okay. Anything happen before you start to feel pressure? Okay. Which one comes first? I'll be sick to my stomach. Okay. And whereabouts in your stomach do you feel sick? Okay. Does it come on kind of like a wave of feeling sick, or is it just all of a sudden it's there? It's kind of there. Okay. All right. So, you're going to step here. Think of an incident with your ex-husband. Step here. And think about your anger with him. And when you start to feel that in your stomach, you're out here. The earliest possible indication that your body is getting into anger. You understand? I understand. I think they're both the same, but I don't think there's a step no. between the two. There, you, could, you could do them both together. This is just a yeah. little. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, there wasn't a step there, was there? <laughs> no, there's no step there. <laughs> okay, so I want you to do it like this. <clears throat> I want you to do it again. And I want you, as soon as you start to step like this when you come out. I'm sorry? In instead of coming out here, I want you to step over here when you start to feel it and come out this way. So you have something anchored to that. Can you do that? Okay. Right. So, were you able to get some of it? The anger, I mean? Yep. Okay. Got enough? Well, 
help you wad the first part. Sure. Yeah. Or we can. <laughs> <laughs> give good examples of that too. Now, what would be a gesture and or a slogan or word that would go with anger? Actually, that would go with these two. And keep it socially acceptable, please. <laughs> For the purposes of the camera. Okay. So basically, you're going to go, you're going to put your hand there and go, yeah. Yeah. like that. Okay. So <clears throat> do this. I mean, again, do it fast. You, you step on this, you step up here and go, bleh, you're out. Okay. Okay. Now, I, I know most of you picked up on this, but every time she laughs, I touch her shoulder. That, that gives me an anchor to her humor and it's a good break state. <clears throat> okay, now what you're going to do is this, and let me let me show you without walking on yours. I'll, I'll get right above it. So you're going to start here. You're going to step on this, go here, blah, and then you're going to go here and, and do your statement. And I want you to stay here. And just do it till this sinks in. Then go up here, do your smile, right on, and stay here, and really let it go 100% into your whole body. So these two are going to be fast. Okay. Dwell here. Okay. When, you're, when you're full, step over here and dwell there. And, and do the physical thing and the auditory thing over and over. So. Now do, your, do, your, do your motion. I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm just trying to get rid of this. So do the sound and do the motion two or three times. Before I get over feeling sick? If you're still feeling sick, then come out of here. The whole idea is that that takes you out of feeling sick. Yeah. Okay? So is this not strong enough or? I guess not. <coughs> so how do you feel now? Okay. What color did you say this in with? I want you to do this. <coughs> I want you to, to do this again. Blup, look up and do that. And stay here. Just that fast. But look up to the ceiling. as fully as you can. Then when you're in it fully, step up to the last one. When you're totally <clears throat> into confidence and feeling good about yourself, able to laugh at the world, again, do your smile and your slogan to yourself several times. When you totally have got into it, step, step out.
Good. All right. <clears throat> now, I want you to do this one more time. Except this time, you don't stay in that one quite as long, but you do stay longer than you do here. So it's like you're going to chain them together. So you you step on this one, do do the symbol, you know, blip, then go here and then go here and and right, right on. Go there the quickest. Hmm? Go there quicker. Yeah, do them. Yeah, just a little bit quicker. Main thing, what you're doing <clears throat> is just chaining the states together. Um, so once you've already walked this one time, it's going to start moving anyway. <clears throat> one more. It's like the firewalk. <laughs> one, one more time for the very last time. What a revenge you'll get on him. How's that feel? Not bad. Is it what you want to feel rather than angry at him? Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Now, her gestures, <clears throat> excuse me, don't, don't lend themselves too much to a dance. I mean, it's hard to put a smile in. Well, I guess you could put a smile in your dance. So if I can get a, a kid to be real demonstrative, you know, with what they do, then what I have them do is speed it up, and then one last time, it's like, you know, whatever the, the moves are, they just kind of blend them together. It's kind of like the, the uh, score dance, those of you that have done that, and just kind of blend them together in one flowing stroll through it, if you will. And you can do that if you want to. I want you to move fast. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it's like, bleh, whatever. Go, one, go from one to the other. Put in each motion and each statement in there and do it just about as fast as you can. Okay. <laughs> now, <clears throat> what was your ex-husband's name? What is your ex-husband's name? I don't say the name. Hmm? I don't say the name. Well, you don't say the name? No, I don't. So when you think about the stuff that you're mad at him about, or used to be mad at him about, how is it? <laughs> so a while ago when I asked her to think about her husband, what happened? Uh -huh. I mean, she, oh, you know, that type of deal. And so now I ask her to think about him, and she's just like, what stuff? And that's what you want to happen. The nice thing about this is that it is generative. What typically happens is when she would start to think about him, it'd be like, a, you know, that she'd get stuck in it, so to speak, and couldn't get herself out. We can try harder if you want to. Can you dwell on him? Oh, well, I'm sure I could. I, I, I don't want to try harder. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now, does anybody have any questions of June about her experience up here? Before you ask me questions about what I did? So. Was it uh, difficult? It didn't seem to be, but it would seem to, uh, once you were in this state of calm and peace, to have to get back into that state of being angry again, to, to pull it up again. And to me, that would be, yeah. Yeah, you, she doesn't want to go there. Right. Yeah. So that's why I said do it one more time for the last time. You know, because now, She's going to, I, my prediction is she's going to find it very difficult to not only get in that, but certainly to stay there. Okay, thank you, June. <clears throat> yes. Wait a minute. An entangled mic. Yeah. Would you do any kind of future pace? Um, sure. 
Can. I did a test on it. You did a test. You did a future. Not a future, but. It's still turned on. Now, the future phase will be when she goes out to Meta or at the last. No, if I <clears throat> if I was doing the future pace, it would be over here in Meta, and I'd just say, think of the next time that you'd have opportunity right. to be with your husband, and see what happens. Uh, or somebody mentions his name or whatever. Yeah. That's what, that, was, that was the test that you just did, though. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't specifically do it in the future. I just said, think of, think of your husband. Future pace is, is a very special thing that we do in NLP. It, it's it's really useful because you you get to test your work. And you also get, when you do a future pace, you step into the future and say the very next time that you will have this experience. You, and what you're doing is programming yourself in, in the new time, in the future, to do the new behavior. Okay, so um, I, would, I would probably have been inclined to do that if I got her calibrated into a really strong state. I would future pace her at that point and then test her in meta. Um, is there a reason why you would future pace in meta? Um, why not? I'm asking. <laughs> I'm asking. I mean, that's just well, how I would do it, and I want to. I'm not. I'm not trying to see that when she's in this state, can she get angry or not? I'm trying to see that when she's out there in life and she runs across her husband or whatever, you know, what happens to her? Does she do this real fast? That would be the testing, though, as opposed to a future pace. Yes. What would happen if we did a future pace? Would be that she would, like, maybe when she goes back home, she would. See him for some reason, and you would you if you're watching close, you would literally see the strategy go off. Right. And by now she's done it enough time that what so you'd end what you'd you'd see her just end up in that state. Okay. Come on. <clears throat> now, any other questions, me? So let me review. Hopefully you ran that good movie in your mind of the stuff to go through. Lay out four pieces of paper or whatever you're going to use. Do the third step first. This is the one that, uh, you know, where you're, you're at calm, you're at ease, you're at peace of mind, you're uh, something that's an, an opposite of this, opposite of the anger, where she wants to be. And the last one is more of a long-lasting type of thing, it's more about self-esteem, like I feel good about myself, I feel confident in my ability to be in the world. You build that third and fourth anchor real strong. Put a gesture or a body position in it, and also a word or two that symbolizes it. Then you come over here, and you have to do real fast with the first and second step. First one is just um, like, for example, with uh, attention deficit disorder, <clears throat> there might be um, different people that, that drive them into ADD symptoms. Like maybe they're or different things that they're impulsive. So um, maybe a teacher, a certain teacher, causes them to be hyper. Or maybe their kid sister causes them to be hyper. Maybe their parent says something, do your homework, and it causes them to be hyper. So you, I, the reason I use this first one is all those different kind of contexts rather than just they get hyper. So I do about two or three of those things, but the big thing is you step in here and you, you start to get into that incident and step in here, and you want that early warning sign. And then you break it out. Do two or three of those if, if you need a lot of context, or several contexts. Once you've got these two anchors established, then you chain them together. First time you go through, you do the first two real fast. Dwell here, get a full state. Go to the last one, dwell here, do a full state. Next time you do it, just do it very deliberate. In other words, she thinks of her husband, she blah. She's so you're you're still you're not you're not dwelling as much here. You're just chaining them together a little bit faster. And then if you want to do the dance, or if you want to do it the third time, I'd suggest that it's almost like you know walk through. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When I see, when I see it's an emotion that's just really um, kicking them out of being resourceful. 
And I'll give you an example. Had a woman from um, eastern part of the United States, New Jersey, if I remember correctly, called me and she had a six-year-old that um, would almost daily, the school would call her and say, he's out of control, come get him. And he um, would just bite people, he'd jump on people's backs and try to scratch their eyes out. He'd even do it with teachers. Because they'd say, do your homework, and he would just throw a rage. You look at him wrong, he'd throw a rage. Um, very bright young man. Um, so he, she brought him in from New Jersey. <clears throat> and one of the very first things I did was the ADD dance with him. I did some EFT and some other stuff with him, too. Um, they went back home, and the mother emailed me probably about three weeks later and said, he hasn't had an incident since we were there. The teachers think it's a miracle, you know, the, <laughs> asking what's happening. And um, another one that that's, to me is a real cute story. A little second grader was brought to me, and same thing. He had big time anger. He had also had a trauma in early grade, early years. Um, he was the one that had candida, by the way. Um, was born with candida. Just, I mean, my ex-wife taught at his school, so when she found out I was working with him, she said, "Oh man." You know, you can't do anything about him. He's just out of control. I mean, teacher would tell him to do his math homework, and he'd just he'd stand up. No, I'm not going to do it. You can't make me do it. And he'd run out into the hall, down the hall, screaming, throw things, stuff like that. And, but he would, he would always regret it. Cutest little kid you have ever seen in your life. I mean, I love that kid. Um, and so I did this with him. Um, Yeah, maybe a teacher telling him to sit down and do his homework. Well, yeah, I think he had a bigger sister or somebody that pushed his buttons, too. So if it is teacher and sister, would you put them both in? The no, i do them one at a time. Right. Um, and it probably doesn't make any difference. I mean, just as long as you get it chained together. Um, mother brought him back about two weeks later. This is towards the end of the school. And said, well, he hadn't had any incidents since that in school, but, man, this kid's so impulsive. I mean, you know, we, we went to the zoo the other day on a, on a school trip and said, you know, he'd see the, a lion or something like this, and he'd be gone, you know, and be lost in the crowd, you know, and said he, he, doesn't, he doesn't stop to analyze, you know, what's going on. And so I did impulsiveness with him. And um, <laughs> what's real easy, or what's real interesting is that... <clears throat> After he, he, after we did it several times, and the last time he walked through it, he went through like this, and he looked down, and it was like his eyes were wide because he wasn't into the impulsiveness. His eyes were wide like, wide like this, and he reached down. He went. Ah. Oh. <laughs> and then I found out later from his, his mother that he went, they t she took him back to school, and he was holding these pieces of paper. He walks into the classroom and says, you need to learn to do what Dr. Blackerby does. <laughs> oh, that's a great story. <laughs> yeah, and, and, so, and the mother later said that he, that he, wasn't, he didn't do the impulsiveness stuff anymore. In fact, she called me the following fall and reported that he was just doing really well in school, that he was not, not having any problems at all, and that he wanted, he made, his, his kid fell in love with me too, and he, he just wanted to come see me. And tell, tell me how good he was doing in school and stuff like this. Yeah. So, any other questions about how to do it? Yes. Any other questions? Okay, yeah. Okay, I just want to say something. When you're a little kid, they have less baggage, yes. It's an observation, And you do this score, this ADD dance. But I'm an adult, and I have more baggage. And let's say I have great fear, and I'm like zero to ten, I'm... Mm -hmm. And I know that any process we do is beneficial, and it starts to sink in. But I'm just wondering, if something's like a 10, you know, and it's really, I'm wondering if this, would it be beneficial to do this later when it drops to a 5 for me, some, and the notion drops to a 5? You know what I'm, can you understand, am I making myself clear? Well, if it draws 
like I'm wondering, is it really big? I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking of this. I'm well, see, this, this, doesn't, this, doesn't, this doesn't do therapy. All this does well, is kick you out of it. So yeah. what you want, the critical thing, Elaine, would be for you to get the very earliest signal that you're about to go into fear. And to get somebody with you, and by the way, I want all non-NLP people to be working with an NLP person. Okay? Make sure that you, whoever works with Elaine, if she does this, make sure you have an excellent break state, a real strong break state, and use it when she jumps off several times. So, I mean, you know, right down here. And then, <laughs> yes, Ed. If someone really doesn't want it, if someone really doesn't want to make the change, uh -huh. will they change? If they really don't want to make the change, will they change? Um, yeah, I would go after how come they don't want to make the change. You mean like they get into anger and they, they want to keep the anger? Yes. Um, I would probably talk to them about it. I mean, what are they there for? I mean, if, if, um, if a parent brought a kid into me and the, the parent wanted the kid to change, but the kid didn't change, you know, if I, and if I couldn't show him the benefit of making the change, then I'd probably leave him alone, basically, because it just wouldn't be ecological to do something that they didn't feel right about. Is this really getting rid of what... Is this really a process to get rid of the anger or whatever it is, or is it a process of learning cues so that when it comes up, you deal with it better? I, I think I'm confused on that. It's, it's a process for interrupting the pattern. Because okay. so most people, like the fear that, that Elaine has or the anger that's here, the pattern is with June, I suspect, and you can tell me if this is wrong, that whatever was triggering her to get into the anger of the husband, it's just like she was just like sinking into quicksand. It's like she, more more she thought about it, the more deeper she would get into it. And what this does is interrupt that pattern. Doesn't get rid of the anger. She still would have the anger toward her husband, but it's giving her uh, something to use to get. Yeah, so she can stay resourceful. Right. Right. Because whenever she sinks into this in the past, she would lose all of her resources. Wouldn't be able to, to handle everything. Cash? I have a logistics situation. So if there's any more questions, this is off the topic. Go ahead and do that, and I'll deal with the logistics thing. OK. Um, so are you saying if I start to think about them, I should just move right through it real quick? So that I to think about them without getting angry? You should be able to think about them without getting angry. Can you? Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> Where are we going to do this in this place here? Yeah, the next door is full. Do it in the lobby, do it in the hallway, do it in here. You only need four feet. So grab your partner and. Um, I'd, I'd say 40 minutes, 20, 20 minutes apiece. I don't know that, uh, do you want to share, Elaine? Okay. She had a real, uh, she had a real unusual application of this, which is, <laughs> yes, catch. To answer that question, I had done that very thing when I first learned this process. I didn't use it specifically on anger, but in some other type of situation, which I wanted to be more resourceful, and I used it for that. So, yes, very successful for that as well. <laughs> Any other comments, reaction to it? Um, again, when we get in the morning, um, Sandy's going to do the official teaching or introduction to EFT, and EFT is something that is equally powerful with that, and so, and you'll get to experience a different way of, of doing it, so. Um, I think you guys look like you've had enough today. Yeah. <laughs> so, get some rest, refresh yourself, um, treat yourself right, be back in the morning, bright and bushy-eyed. Do what?
Yeah, uh, thank you for that. So real quickly, real quickly, listen, listen, real quickly, meet with your small groups, and what did you learn today? 